Let me move on to the president's tariff plan, sir, because U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer will meet with his EU and Japanese counterparts to talk about the new steel and aluminum tariffs because they want to be excluded. This comes as China is threatening retaliation against the new policy. Uh, I spoke with White House National Trade Council Director Peter Navarro yesterday. Here's what he said and why he thinks these threats might be ringing hollow. We've been uncle sucker. I mean, we have these large trade deficits mm. simply because we're an open market. All we're looking for is fair and reciprocal trade. And yeah. I think our allies at the end of the day will understand that all we're doing here is defending two key industries so that we can come and help with their defense when they need us. So, Congressman, some GOPers are considering legislation to block the tariffs uh, and to thwart these metal tariffs. Would you be in on that? Well, my concern with, with the tariff, if, if it's being used as temporary leverage to open markets, that could end up being good for the economy in the long term. That could lead to more trade and more open trade. Uh, my concern at the right now is, like in Florida, for example, we got about 100 jobs who use aluminum and steel downstream as inputs for every one job that's directly manufacturing aluminum and steel. And so I don't want to increase prices for those other businesses and then potentially cost jobs. So I think that, and, and we still need to know the details about how broad these things are going to apply, who's it going to apply to, who's it not going to apply to. Uh, the president issued kind of a broad proclamation, but I think the details are really going to matter here. So then you would be in favor of having as many exemptions as possible, then it sounds like. For our positive trading allies and particularly with an eye towards not damaging any of those downstream businesses who are using aluminum and, and steel as inputs in their products or mm. in their businesses. Uh, I think we have to look out for them as well as just the people who are directly involved in producing those products. Right. So do you think this is about NAFTA, about China? Or because it, with all of these exemptions, I mean, you have to ask yourself, why do it? Is it just a negotiating tactic? I think that's part of it. And I think China and the president's been very tough on China. And I think it's been well documented, some of their practices. And I think those need to be addressed, whether tariffs are the best way or not. I mean, we can debate that in terms of NAFTA. Uh, there may be some ways where a renegotiation would be beneficial to the United States. I do think that they're using this to spur that along. And yeah. if they can get an agreement uh, that will open up uh, markets for us, uh, I think that that'll be a win. Um, and so this is something that the president is very much engaged in. He cares a lot about it. And I think his goal is to get better deals for the United States. And I think most people agree that that would be a good thing. Let me ask you about the stiff sanctions. Now the plan talks in North Korea. There's still a long road uh, to a face-to-face -face meeting between the president and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. But the president said that he hopes to do what others haven't. Watch this. We've had a problem for years with North Korea. In fact, President Obama said it was the biggest problem we had. This should have been handled, by the way, over the last 30 years, not now. That's when it should have been handled. We shouldn't have handled it. This should have been handled, and everybody will say it, too. But that's okay, because that's what we do. We handle things. So, Congressman, as a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, your thoughts on this unprecedented move by the White House to agree to a meeting? The president's right. His predecessors have basically let the problem fester. President Obama did next to nothing, and they basically just hoped that the problem would go away. That's not going to work. And in this president's credit, he's come in and said, Obama's telling me this is the biggest problem. I've been, you know, Trump has been talking about this for 20 years. Um, he's like, I'm going to confront this and, and we're going to actually change the equation here. And I think he's already done that. Now, whether there's going to be a meeting and whether this is real, I don't know. But I think the fact that North Korea is even engaging in this is because this is an unprecedented level of pressure that's been brought to bear on them. Mm. I think there's going to need to be more to be done to make sure that, that we can potentially get anywhere. But the question is, is what the president's insistence on facing this problem directly, what he's done yeah. uh, to bring pressure on the regime, uh, is Kim now thinking that maybe those nukes 
are causing his regime to be a little bit more instable than stable. I mean, yeah. I think historically th that has been his ticket to remain in power, and he probably still believes that. Yeah, really but if he starts to change that calculation a little bit, that's the opening for us to actually solve the problem. Congressman, let me move on to the uh, FISA controversy. Do you think we need a second special counsel to investigate what has gone on at the FBI, the top of the FBI? Yes, for, for a couple reasons. One is uh, you can't have the FBI investigate itself or the DOJ, so you need someone outside the swamp in Washington who's going to look at this with a fresh set of eyes and is not going to owe anybody. You know, I don't want somebody who's buddies with Comey or McCabe or any of that. I want a fresh set of eyes in here. Um, and the second reason is the inspector general who Sessions initially identified as the person who's going to look into this cannot bring any criminal charges. He can't impanel a grand right. jury. He can't even subpoena people who are outside the Department of Justice. So that's clearly inadequate given how many of the key people, McCabe, Comey, are no longer inside the government. Yeah. So yes, we do need it. Uh, I think we need it now. And I do think, look, we talk about Trump-Russia collusion. You have a special counsel there. Since this thing's been going on, the, the evidence, I think, of wrongdoing has been more on the side of those who were pursuing this narrative in 2016. And I think it goes beyond just the FISA. You're really looking at from the time Hillary's investigation started yeah. all the way through the special counsel, how did these people conduct themselves? Yeah, I think it's incredible that we're looking for Russian collusion. Meanwhile, we know that the Democrats paid for the dossier. There's your Russian collusion. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Ron DeSantis, good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you soon, Congressman.